Hello, everyone. Am I on? Okay. Hi. So who remembers what today we're doing today, I should say? It's not today, but what are we doing? Besides church, we are honoring our pastors for their anniversary. So if you didn't get your card in the basket back there, run up real fast and put it right here. Um, Because I am going to read a scripture. Try not to get nervous and cry because you guys mean so much. Um, Titus 2, 1 through 8 says, You, however, must teach what is appropriate to sound doctrine. Teach the older men to to be temperate, worthy of respect, self-controlled, and sound faith in love and endurance. Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, and to be subject to their husbands so that no one will malign the word of God. Similarly, encourage the young men to be self-controlled, and everything set them an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned, so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about you. That scripture speaks a volume for you, too. You are such true examples for every single one of us here, no matter what our age is, to be an example of what a husband and wife should look like. And we are so thankful, beyond thankful, for the example you are to us. And we're so happy that you came to us and that you're here and we're able to celebrate your anniversary and honor you. And we all love you more than words can express. So. Hallelujah. Would you give them a big hand? 27 years. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. And if you haven't had a chance to bless them, you can do so. Uh, you can, if you'd like to sow into them. Uh, I know Wendy and I are definitely sowing into them because of the blessing they've been to us. You can give online or you can mark it in your offering envelope. Pastor's anniversary, we will make sure they get it. And so uh, God bless you both. We love you very much. And may you have an awesome, awesome uh, rest of the weekend and maybe get some more celebration in. So God bless you. you, And praise the Lord. Man, God is so good. It's great to see everybody in the house today uh, here at Forgiven Church. Uh, Man, in all honesty, there's no other place I'd rather be than here with all of you awesome, amazing people in this house today. For those of you who are watching uh, live, whether right now or in the future, we welcome you also here uh, to Forgiven Church. And let us know that you are, um, that you're watching. Uh, let, us, let us know who you are. We have a lot of people that, uh, that watch that we don't know uh, because of the amount of streams and watches and everything else. So let us know that you're with us. Uh, we had somebody that we actually ran into yesterday. My, my wife and I were having breakfast at a restaurant and um, Somebody that, that actually moved uh, several years ago. They used to attend here, and they moved several, uh, several years ago. And, and we saw them at the restaurant, and they said, Hey, we watch you on a regular basis. And they had no idea uh, that they were because they hadn't made any comments and stuff. But uh, it's just great to see um, everybody who's here and everybody watching. it. And thank you once again for, uh, uh, for everybody who blessed us uh, for our anniversary. It's it's. You know, it's not something you have to do, and, and um, you know, my wife and I, we appreciate it. We don't take it for granted, and, um, you know, I, I am uh, blessed to have a woman uh, by my side for 27 years. Uh, she, she makes me better, Amen. and so, uh, you know, when the Bible says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing, you know, and they're, they're a helpmate, and we're supposed to be a helpmate to one another, but it's so great when you have um, uh, just unity. I mean, there is... Very, very, very few things that my wife and I disagree on because our focus is the word. And, uh, and I'm so, uh, so thankful 
uh, for her. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. Uh, amen. A uh, couple just got, uh, quick things. Uh, we are still scheduled uh, for next month to have our parking lot uh, redone, the two-thirds of the parking lot. We are uh, getting done in Jesus' name. Uh, most of the money, uh, is Brother Merlin still in here? Right here. Did, oh, you're in the back. Okay, hey, buddy. Uh, do you have a total, most of I mean, are we around 46? Me- huh? That's how much we got in? We need 48,000. Oh, we need 4,000. Okay, let's, let's clarify them zeros on there, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so we still need uh, 4,800 to go, but God's got that. Uh, that's, that's all good. No big deal. And, and like I said, we, we have several people who are, you know, they're giving $10, $20, $50 here, and that does start adding up. We've had uh, people uh, give large amounts. Uh, it just, just keep giving. And thank you for everybody who is giving. Uh, because uh, during corporate prayer this morning, by the way, do you announce corporate prayer, Merlin, during announcements? No. You, oh, you do. Okay. But this morning during uh, corporate prayer, uh, as I was in here, uh, the Spirit of the Lord shared to me, and he said, there are some people that are getting ready to hit a season of multiplication resource-wise. He, 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 said, he said some people. He didn't say everybody. He said some people. Now, I, now I, I can tell you why that is, but I don't know about you, but I definitely want to be part of those some people. It, it, I, mean, I mean, just a, 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 a season where it stuff is going to pop like popcorn. You know what I mean? Like when it's been simmering for a while, and next thing you know, it starts going, top, 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 and then it just goes like crazy. And uh, I tell you, the Spirit of the Lord just told me that's when he goes, some people are getting ready to hit that. And so, man, 2020 is a year of harvest, and uh, keep going, amen. Uh, I do want to encourage everybody, maybe some of you, hopefully most of you are are following us on Facebook, or you like our page or whatever, but this past week, uh, we just sowed uh, $500 into teachers, uh, because, you know, kids are going back to school, teachers are going back to school, and I just want to let you know, we support teachers that believe that students are supposed to go back to school. That's where I'm at. And so uh, we at Forgiven Church, we, we believe kids ought to go back to school, uh, 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 teachers ought to go back. And I, I understand the safety protocol, I believe all that stuff. But man, um, if you haven't been watching and seeing, did you know that the suicide rate has gone up, the, the attempts of suicide has gone up for young people? Yes. You want to know? Because when you're at home and you're sheltered and you're not around friends, you're not around this and you're not around that, uh, I tell you. Uh, they need they need social uh, interactive or de- uh, interaction, and so uh, yeah. So we did that uh, this past week, and and uh, like I say, we'll sm- support more teachers if they need it, because uh, our students need to get back to school, and we want to make sure that they're amply supplied in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. So uh, good deal. Uh, let's take a look at our theme for 2020. I know Brother Merlin is going to have some more afterwards, but 2020 is a year of what? It is a year of harvest, and how many of you know God can do something supernaturally, super quick? And, uh, and uh, as I was sharing midweek, if you were here midweek, we have had things pop uh, even in our own personal lives with my wife and I. There's been something that happened for us that uh, we have been wanting for several years. We've been trusting for for several years. And, uh, and how many of you guys know you got to keep looking, you got to keep searching, you got to keep your antennas open or out, so to speak? And so there was something we were, we were checking out not too long ago, and a door wasn't open, and we're like, okay, well, we just keep believing in whatever else. And then the very next day, bam, uh, it was there. And, uh, and so something that we've been believing for opened up overnight uh, for us. And uh, that's just another harvest for us for this year. And so we, I just got a report also this past week, somebody else upgraded their vehicle too. Somebody else did. So that's somebody else. Now, actually, we've had another person since then uh, get another vehicle. And I'm just like, man, is this a year of vehicles or what is going on? But there are so many people that have been having things, whether it's this branch or North branch, have been getting new vehicles, trusting God. And, and God has been uh, just doing amazing things for that. So keep believing. Amen. Isaiah does say what? Isaiah says, here it is, the least of you will become a thousand, the smallest of mighty nation. I am the Lord in its time. I will do this swiftly, right? Because we serve a God of suddenlies. 
Amen. And how many guys know we all need to fill the seats in Jesus name? If there's an empty seat next to you, you need to trust God to bring people in in Jesus name. Amen. We, we are, we've been, we've had actually outreaches uh, that we have had planned this year to go out and do big things and to go out into the community and, and it all got canceled because of the stupid COVID out there. But how many of you guys know your mouth still works? Invitation still works, amen. You can still reach people, get people, and bring them in and fill these seats in Jesus' name, amen. I, I remember what you were sharing with me last week, what you were sharing, or until two weeks ago, you, you, you were saying, you know what, Pastor, I gotta fill these seats. Right. What he, told, he, he said, if nobody else fills these seats, I'm gonna fill these seats. Amen. Boy, if I had a few more people, I had that same kind of attitude in <laughs> Jesus' name. Amen, got to fill these seats. In Jesus. And by the way, you might be saying, well, if we fill all these seats, what's going to happen? We got a whole bunch more. Amen. Did you know we can fit another 100 seats in the sanctuary? Amen. We can. It's going to be a tight fit. Well, well, the government may not agree with that with all the stances. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I care about people being safe and healthy and everything else, but I believe in a faith-filled environment in Jesus' name. And there's more people that need to hear the truth and the truth about the gospel. Amen. Uh, Matthew 13 does say this. It says, another story, God's kingdom is like a pine nut, what, that a farmer plants. It is quite small as seeds go, but in the course of years, it grows into a huge pine tree and eagles build nest in it. Amen. And you're all eagles in Jesus' name. I said, you're all eagles in Jesus' name. Aren't you glad that we came in here, uh, we're not glad we came in with a turkey mentality or a chicken mentality, but we find that we eagles. And gee, I'm glad that, that I know who I am in Christ, and, and I am nothing without him, but I am everything with him. Yeah. I am God's favorite child, and so are you. Yeah. Remember, same thing he said about me, he said about you. You just got to believe it in Jesus' name, and, and sometimes I just give myself a hug. I do. I just give myself a hug because Jesus lives in me. I just hug myself and say, good job. You know, he does. He does he, do you know he tells you good job when you do a good job? That's right. He does. That's the God that, you know, we don't, sound, we're not the, we don't serve the God that sits there and beats us up all the time, man. He's the one that commends us and says thank you. Because, and, and, you know, one of these days we're going to hear those words when we get up there. What? Well, well oh, yeah, well done, good and faithful. Right? How many are you going to hear those words in Jesus' name? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. RFC Mission, let's take a look at it. It says this. Forgiven Church is here to love God, love others, and discover and develop the greatness that's within each one of us. Amen. Now, I want to let everybody know that's in this place and everybody watching live right now or in the future, God don't make no junk. God is the one that created us. Amen. We, we, I, look, I'm telling you, whether you believe in evolution or not, hopefully you don't, because I didn't come from no pond scum, no worm, right? No monkey, no chimpanzee, right? Right? God created me, right? When, when my mom and my dad got together, well, God had a part of that, and he gave life. And I'm here to tell you, that's why we support life. Here. And the thing about it is, is when God creates you, he says he knew you when you're in the womb and he formed and he put greatness inside of every single one of us. The one thing the enemy tries to do and the world tries to do is they try to tear that down and they try to make you like everybody else. I tell you, we need to be who God created us to be. Amen. Amen. I mean, that has nothing to do with my message, but I'm just telling you, I, I'm excited about the word today. Is there anybody else excited about the word? All right, come on, let's get into our faith quote, everybody. Come on, grab your Bibles, one of my pie. Let's say this together. This is my Bible, and I believe it was written for me to understand and agree with. I am what it says I am, set free from all the power of the enemy. I will do what it says to do then I will see that it is reality. Amen. You got to look at least three people say, I like your smile, like your smile, like your smile, like your smile, like your smile. Oh, you're like, oh I got some hair flying around here. <laughs> All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, if you were here uh, last week, I began a teaching 
that the Lord spoke to me about, and it is the need to guard the seed. And uh, how many of you know that's important? That's very, very, very important, especially in the world that we are living in today. And so Matthew 13, beginning in verse uh, 16, just a really, really quick review to the best of my ability. Matthew 13, 16 uh, says this, but blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear, right? How many of you guys say I'm blessed? Yeah, 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 yeah I'm blessed and you're blessed. You're blessed to see, you're blessed to hear what God wants you to hear today in Jesus' name. Amen. Can I agree with that? Yes. Jesus said you're blessed. I said you're blessed. So you guess what? You're blessed whether you like it or not. Yes. Amen. He says, for truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This was the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on the rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and, and receives it with joy. But since they have no root, remember that from last week? Just tell your neighbor you need to be rooted. Tell your other neighbor you need to be rooted. Right? Rooted. Remember rooted? We talk about the more roots you get down, the stronger you're going to be, the more you're going to be planted. And when you're planted and you're rooted, when storms come, they can't rip you right out. Too many Christians with that little itty bitty root mentality. Yeah. Have, have any of you have any of you pulled a weed or pulled something out where I'm telling you this thing was this tall above the ground and then you pulled it out and the root was only like that deep? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that weird? But I mean, it popped that baby right on out. And so many Christians are like that. Why? Because they're not rooted, right? He says, since they have no root, they last only for a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of what? Because of the word, because of what you're hearing right now, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But, everybody say but. But, but the seed falling on good soil, and I declare your good soil in here in Jesus' name. Yeah refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sold. Look, continue reading. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field, but while everyone was sleeping. Just making sure nobody's in here doing that right now. I don't need any intercessors. Just so you know, I have already prayed. <laughs> what are you doing, pastor? Interceding. If you're interceding and drool's coming out of your mouth, you're lying. Amen. He says, good seed. He says, the, but the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in a field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, the weeds also appeared, or the weeds also appeared. The owner's servant came to him and said, sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Yes, Pastor Scott is sowing good seed. Amen. Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servant asked him, do you want us to go up and pull them up? Of course, he's talking about end time harvest there, but he's also letting everybody know, don't be sleeping. Don't come in here, get excited about God, and then this afternoon, you know, you have no idea what pastor, what pastor sowed. The word that came forth. Don't let Monday and Tuesday show up and throw you off of what happened on Sunday. Amen. And so many people are like that. But the thing about it is, is where are you at when this, this word is being sown today by Pastor Farmer Scott, right? And then look at 1 Peter 5a. If you just put that on the screen for me, that'd be wonderful. Look what it says this. Keep a cool head. We all need to keep a cool head, Amen. right? Keep a cool head. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better than to catch you what? To catch you napping. Now, remember, we, all, we understand we all need a power nap, right? But he's talking about spiritually napping, spiritually relaxing. Don't come to forgiven church and go, oh, I heard that before. Ah, this is for the person next to me. Or, you know, this is really for those people that didn't show up today. I wonder where they are. I don't need This isn't for me. How many of you guys know this is for everybody? And don't think just because you've heard this before, you can't get something from it. My wife, myself, I cannot tell you how many people, we will listen to the same message over and over and over and over. We could listen to the same message 10 times and get new stuff out of it every single time because there's so many layers in the Word of God. And I'm here to tell you, you will not get every single thing that, that, that you think you needed in just one message. You'll get some, but I guarantee you, go back and, get it, go back and watch it again. Spirit of God will reveal something too new to you. And, and I, I, I just know this. When, like, whenever my wife's ministering or somebody else is ministering here or we're gone somewhere and I'm taking notes and I'm putting down nuggets that the Lord's sharing with me and leading me even to something else and I'm writing that down, they just keep on speaking. Now, I don't know about you, but is that frustrating to you like it is to me because I don't want to miss what they're saying even though I'm jotting stuff down? Yeah, and by the way, you ought to be jotting stuff down. Amen. How many guys know we don't buy school supplies just for school, people? I, now, see, I know everybody's putting their phones up. Got it, Pastor. Here's my phone. Got my tablet. It's all, yeah, got it going on. You want to take notes so you can go back and look at this. Super, super, super important. Now, I want you to go to a place in here, over here in Mark. Look with me in Mark chapter 5. Because we talked about how important it is to guard the seed last week, right? Now we're going to watch and we're going to look at an example here where somebody else had to do the exact same thing. Okay, and watch what happens. And remember, when we were going through the seed, things that are actually going to be happening in the story that actually took place. So here we go. Mark chapter 5, beginning in, or, or Mark chapter 5, beginning in verse 21. And actually, we, we read the parable of the sower in Matthew 13, right? Well, actually, the parable of the sower is in Mark chapter 4, just the chapter right before this. So it's really kind of neat how this is all going to tie in here. So Mark chapter 5, beginning in verse 21, says this. Then Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of a lake. A large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. It says, then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. Do you see that? He was a synagogue ruler. And how many of you guys know the religious people had a problem with Jesus? But isn't it amazing what they're willing to do and what they're willing to lay down when they know that he's the only one that can solve their problems? And this guy who is a leader, who should be opposing what Jesus is doing, probably has opposed him in the past with other leaders comes down and he falls at his feet. Man, we even kind of sang about that today. Laying at your feet. I'm laying everything down at your feet, Lord. Why? Fit right awesome with the message. And he says this. Name, uh, then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came and when he saw Jesus fell at his feet, he pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. And and if you actually read in, in, in Luke 8, Uh, It's the same teaching. You actually find out it's his only daughter. It's not just one of his daughters. It's his only daughter. He says, he says, fell at his feet, pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. His only daughter. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and what? Live. So Jesus went with him. Do you notice Jesus didn't say, well, we'll see if your daughter learns something. We'll see if you learn something. Well, you never know what the father wants to do. The guy comes right up and says, Jesus, would you heal my family member? She's dying. And Jesus is like, let's go. You know why he went like that? You know why there was no discussion? Because he is still Jehovah Rapha. He will always heal at every single time as long as you are going to him as the source. 
So he's on his way. Let's go, Jairus. How many of you guys know that there was some hope that came in Jairus right there? You know what? You know what happened? Faith came by hearing. Jesus says, let's go. There was a seed that was planted in his heart. Right? He already heard about Jesus. Probably already seen some of the miracles he's done. And he's like, I wonder if this guy will do the same thing for me. Goes up to him, asks him if he'll come do it. And he's like, let's go. Let's do this thing. A seed's planted in his heart. Hope is rising up. Amen. Right? So it says this, a large crowd followed and pressed around him. A woman who was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. You know what's kind of ironic? I already knew I was going to be teaching about this this week. The Lord had shared with me, and we actually talked about this during midweek service. This, little, this part right here about this woman. He says, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. Isn't it weird how, how money and sickness always go together? But 3 John 2 says, above all things, I pray that you would what? Prosper, Prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. It's good to know what God wants for us. Amen. And he says, when she heard about Jesus, kind of like Jairus. Jairus heard something about Jesus. So did this woman, right? She came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped. When did it stop? Immediately. Immediately. See, we serve the God that does miracles and does healings. Both miracles and healings and now if you look up, up back at Jairus it says that she will be healed and live Jairus wasn't even asking for a miracle he just he says just touch her so she can get better and that she'll live but this lady knew she needed a miracle or she was going to die aren't you glad that we serve the God that does both amen, amen. and he says this Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered. And yet you ask, who touched me? Right? How many of you guys know you can come to church amidst all these people here all these people here, and you're just kind of pressing in a little bit, but there's some people that will come in faith. Amen. And you can come to church and hope that something might happen, just maybe fing fingers crossed that something might happen. See, these people were all kind of rubbing against Jesus, hoping something would rub off. But this lady came in faith. Right? And, and then it says this. When Jesus said, or the disciples said, it says, you see the people crowding around you and the disciples answered, yeah, you ask who touched me. But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. See, a lot of people, when, when they read this, they think Jesus is almost like upset. He's like, who touched my clothes? Who, who touched me? Who, wait, somebody touched me. And his disciples are like, have you lost your mind? Everybody's touching you. Now, I don't believe that's what happened, was happening with Jesus. I believe he was totally stoked. I believe he was totally excited because all these people are touching him. Everything's going on. He's trying to get to Jairus' house. All these people are pushing him. So all of a sudden, power flows out. Amen. And he's like, somebody touched me. Yes. Somebody got me in faith because, see, the Bible says without faith it's impossible to... To, oh man, y'all know that. It's impossible to please God without faith. And so I'm here to tell you, when power flowed out of him, all of a sudden he got happy. He's like, somebody touched me. This is exciting. I got to know who this person is. Who is it? I believe he was totally excited. And he's asking, and he's asking, and the disciples are like, dude, have you lost your mind, man? Look at all. He's like, tell me who it is. I'm not going any further until I find out who this person is. I love it when faith is there. Amen. I believe that's what happened. I believe Jesus was stopped. 
He was on his way to have a healing take place, to help somebody else that requested healing, but he stopped in his tracks because faith hooked up. Man, that is awesome. He's like, I ain't going any further until I find out who this is. Right? And then if you read this, it says this. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet. Look at that. Two people in a short amount of time. Jairus comes, falls at his feet. And then this woman comes and falls at his feet. Just a question for anybody in here, or maybe you watch it online. When was the last time you actually fell on your feet? When was the last time you actually kneeled in worship to your Savior? I, I, I know people say, well, I'm doing it in my head, Pastor. I'm doing it in my heart. Yeah, but there's something that when you do it in the natural That it, that it just is a humbling thing. There, has any of you guys ever seen me do it on worship sometimes? Man, when I'm in the presence of his majesty, the king of kings and the lord of lords, and I can feel his presence, and I just, it just humbles me that he would still be here with me. I love it. And, and, and then she says this, and it says, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. See, why was she scared? She was scared because she wasn't supposed to be out there because she had the issue of blood. She was not supposed to go out publicly. That's why when you read other places around here, she snuck in. Because she knew, everybody knew what was going on, but thank God they were, they were just looking around and wasn't, wasn't focusing on her. And she snuck in and got her a miracle. But she knew, when I say this, these people are going to have a problem. Isn't it? Some people are just so stupid. That, that's, like, that's like when Jesus cured somebody and said, you're not supposed to heal on the Sabbath. Shut up. Okay. So I'm guard my heart today, all right? Just group hug me. Jesus, help pastors told somebody to shut up. I'm being nice. <laughs> There's other things I'd like to say, but it wouldn't be very Christ-like. Yeah. Verse 35, or it says, it says this, verse 34. He said to her, daughter, your what? Faith. Notice Jesus didn't take credit for this. What? Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. So you know what Jesus is telling everybody? It's okay what she did. Leave her alone. Right? How many of you guys know that's awesome that this woman gets her miracle and she can still go happily walking away with her miracle? Not being condemned by everybody else. And then it says this. So how many of you guys know this? Jairus is probably pretty stinking excited about now. He goes up, Jesus says, let's go. He's excited, right? He's excited, and then he's probably like, well, let's come on, let's get to the house, let's get to the house, but he sees another miracle take place. See, I know I've taught this in the past. I've said this in the past. I know other people have said this in the past. There's, pro J there's people who probably think of Jairus are probably pretty ticked off. Come on, get to my house. Why wait for this woman? Why stop and talk? Well, faith stops God, I'm just telling you, it just does. But the thing about it is, is I believe Jairus is also, was also inspired. The reason why is he said, oh, we're on our way, and look, the miracle, maker, or just, the miracle worker just did another one. And now he's on his way to my house. So faith began in the beginning. Faith is here again to keep on going, right? And nothing like the devil showing up. Right? Verse 35 says this, while Jesus was still speaking, so Jairus saw what happened. Some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader, and said, your daughter is dead. They said, why bother the teacher anymore? How many of you guys know things went from bad to worse? 
Jairus is excited. He sees another miracle. He's like, awesome. This is great. Look what Jesus is saying. He's the miracle worker. This is great. Let's do this thing. Your daughter's dead. What? Wait a minute. How many of you guys know the devil comes immediately to take that seed? This is not a very long time from when Jairus had his hope that Jesus was on his way to do what Jesus promised he would do. How many of you guys know we serve the promise keeper? Amen. Amen. And he says this, why bother the teacher anymore? And you know, ugh, there are so many, ugh, you know what they're saying? Give up and quit. There's no sense bothering anymore. You came to him for something that was this big, but it's a whole lot bigger now. You didn't come to God. You didn't come to Jesus for this big thing. You came to him for this. This is over. You might as well just give it up. Throw in the towel. It's gotten worse. Don't bother him no more because the problem's too big for God. That's what they're saying. Maybe not in this translation. That's basically what the, when they're saying don't bother him no more. They're like give up on him. Give up on why you came. Right? And then it says this. Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid. Just what? Believe. Just believe. Look at some other translations in verse 36. If you got that back there really quick. Is this good for you guys today? It's good for me. Yeah. It says, but Jesus ignored their comments. Jesus heard what they were saying. It wasn't just one person coming and saying, multiple people were saying this. You know why? Because they didn't want just one person to tell Jairus his daughter was dead. Man, we got to go in a group because we're all going to have to support him, man. We're all going to have to tell him what's going on. And so while they're telling Jairus, Jesus is eavesdropping. And Jesus said, ignore what they're telling you. I know they're close to you. They're from your house. They might even be, they might, I, they might be, I don't know what, but I'm telling you something. Ignore what they're telling you. Even though they're close to you. They're the close ones that are coming to tell you your daughters. Ignore what they're telling you. And so many people today, they will come up here and they will say, I got to tell you what's going on. I got to tell you this. The doctor's report said that. The bill said this. The, the, the whatever said that. You know what? Sometimes you got to do what Jesus says and you got to ignore what they're saying. I don't care how close they are to you. Jesus said what? Don't be afraid. Just what? Trust, Trust me. See, remember, faith comes by hearing. hearing. But see, Jesus, and we all know, so does what? So does fear. Because Jesus knew fear, some weeds just got in to choke out that seed. Yes. That just got in earlier. That's what's happening. You guys all see this? Man. Look at the next translation. It says this. Je Jesus overheard what they were talking about and said to the leader, Jairus, he goes, don't listen to them. Just trust me. You know what? We say that in here today. We say hallelujah, amen, that's right. But can I tell you something? When, when, when people are saying you're nuts, you've lost your mind, you're crazy, what are you doing believing for bigger, better? What are you believing when the doctors say incurable? What are you believing for that financial miracle? What are you believing about that restoration? What are you believing about that deliverance? Don't you know that can't happen? Yes. It has happened. There you go. Oh, but see, the thing about it is, is my Bible says all things are possible. Right. With, with who? With God. Not on your own. What everybody is saying could be true without God. But you're not without God. Jairus, Jairus was not without Jesus. He was still there. Even though the, the, the tides were turning, even though it was getting worse, Jesus was still there. And he said, keep trusting in me, man. Even though it went from bad to worse, doesn't change the ability that's with me. It might change what everybody else is thinking, but it doesn't change the God that I serve, the Father that I serve. Amen? Amen. Amplified says, 
Overhearing what was being said, Jesus said to the synagogue official, don't be afraid because fear comes by that. Only keep on believing in what? In me and my power. You've got to do that sometimes, people. Sometimes you've got to just believe on what the word says, no matter what everybody else is saying, no matter what everybody's screaming at you, no matter what people are saying about you, you've got to keep just believing in Jesus and his power and his word. Remember, we serve the great I am, not the great I was. Amen. Amen. And then you keep on reading, it says this. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with the people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and he said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. I mean, you think about this. This is, this, is, this is the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the King of kings and Lord of lords. And people are laughing at him. This is the guy that's already done tons of miracles. And they're laughing at him. And the Bible does say this. If they're going to mock him and they're going to accuse him of stuff, they're going to do the exact same thing to you. If you believe like him. If you choose to believe like Jesus, stand on his word, people will laugh at you too. People will make fun of you too. But I'm here to tell you, God has got the last laugh. If you keep standing in him. And then he says this, but they laughed at him. And then look what this says. After he put them all out. Notice it wasn't, he said he put them all out. After he put them all out. What does that mean? You got to what? Yeah, some people you got to tell them to get the hell out. Right. Now, I'm not saying that, that they specifically are from hell. What I'm telling you is what they're telling you. If it is anti-word, if it's anti what you're believing from or believing for, it is from the pit of hell. Anything that comes contrary to this is anti-Christ. And sometimes you got to say, get the hell out. Get that negative out. Get that doubt out. If Jesus could do it and obviously was okay with it, then we should be okay with it too. When you can look at somebody, even if they're a family member or an outlaw that's an in-law or whatever you want to say, they might think they've got good intentions. But you might want to say, look, with all due respect, I need you to stay away for this time. If you're not going to agree with me, I don't need you around me. Because if you remember, Jesus talked about a little bit of leaven getting in. A little bit of doubt getting in and then it spreads. Did you even know when Jesus, did you notice he only asked a few of his disciples to go with him? How many of you guys know he had a whole bunch of disciples already? He did, but you notice he only picked a few. He didn't pick all of them that were his 12. He only picked a few. You know why? Because he had to make sure there was no doubt at all. He only picked a specific amount of disciples that were following him. And then after he got all the doubters and unbelievers and the do-withouters out, right, he took the child's father, Jairus, and mother, and the disciples who were with him, the ones that he said, come with me, and went in there. See, sometimes you got to get some things out when you're ready to go in. Which means you got to be prepared when you're going in. And sometimes you've got to get some stuff out to go in. Because you're getting ready to do some business. Right? And then he says this. When they went in where the child was, he took her by the hand and said to her, Taluth Kalum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up immediately. The girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old at this, and, and at this they were, they were completely astonished. Yeah. See, do you notice 
Jairus came in the very beginning just for a healing. That his daughter would live. But what ended up happening is he needed a supernatural miracle. And Jesus was not phased. In your situation, in any trial that you're in, whatever happens this year, don't let your trials, don't let situations, don't let circumstances, even if they get worse, change what you're believing for. Jesus looked at Jairus and he says, didn't I basically tell you I'm going to your house? See, everybody else could have even told Jesus on the way. And I, I, it doesn't say this, but I bet on the way all those doubters and do, or, do withouters were like, I don't care what Jesus said, she's dead. There was hope before because she still had life in her, but there's no life in her now. She is dead. I don't know what this Jesus dude thinks he's doing. This is just nuts that you're still believing. What is going on? And Jairus is just, cut it out. Or, or Jesus is like, cut, don't listen to that stuff. Don't listen, to, just don't listen to that. Let's just keep going. Let's just get to your house. And then he gets to his house. And there's not just a few people. The majority is wailing. The majority is, a, could you imagine the fight that was going on with Jairus in his head and in his heart. Because they all knew she was dead. But see, the thing about it is, is Jesus is the one that's able to give life and, and make them sleeping only just for a moment. Man. Do you see how Jesus even challenged Jairus? Dude, you got to guard the seed. You got to protect the seed. Because the enemy, the devil, trial, situation, circumstances are trying to get that seed, get you to uproot that seed that's been planted for the miracle that you're going to need. And you know what is so great about this? Boy, if you guys could get this, boy, oh boy, boy. All the power you need for anything, all the deliverance you need, all the, all the whatever you need, no matter how big or how small the need is, there's enough power in every single seed to do a healing or even a miracle. Do you get that? In every seed, in every seed going in, that same seed has got enough power to do the miracle or to do the healing if needed, or it's got enough power to do a miracle. If needed. It's already all in the seed. Amen. Are you protecting the seed? Because if you're believing for something and it's going okay and then all of a sudden things start tanking, don't let that stop you from what you're believing for. Right. Because the power that's in the seed is already bigger than everything else that's going on out here. Yeah. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. See, there's a lot of people like, oh, I believe for this. Oh, now I've got to believe for that. No, it was the same thing at the very beginning. Amen. The same result was that his daughter would live. It's the same thing. Jesus, come that my daughter would live. Whether it was a healing or a miracle, he still got what he needed. And we're the exact same way. The exact same way. You got verse 40 back there? Look at this, uh, and I'll finish here. Provoke the sarcasm. Has anybody ever mocked you before for believing God? Trust me, I have been mocked more than you want to know. I, I, I've been mocked, I've been accused, I've been ridiculed. I'm getting hammered because we don't require masks. I, I, I have been challenged by people, multiple people, to say my, my whole thing is to infect everybody with COVID-19. Yeah, there you go. Another pastor wanting to infect his whole congregation with COVID-19. Yeah, that's my heart. That's what I want to do. Shut up. Just shut your mouth. And you know the sad part about it is it comes from people who claim to be followers of Christ. Right. 
Calm down. Calm down, Pastor. Thank you. Do you hear somebody say, breathe, Pastor? <laughs> breathe it in and let it go. Verse 40 says, provoked a sarcasm. They told him he didn't know what he was talking about. They're saying this about Jesus. Jairus, you don't know what you're talking about. Because you know what? Everybody's saying this. The doctors are saying this. The reports are saying that. And we all know that the majority is always telling the truth. Because it's majority, it's got to be right. Let me ask you a question. On the day of judgment, or when the Bible talks in Matthew chapter 7, it says, narrow is the road that leads to life. Broad is the road that leads to death and hell and destruction. And the majority choose to walk down that road to hell. Does that make them right? No. I think that's stupid. Just because the majority want to go that way doesn't mean I want to go that way. I want to live in faith and walk down that road. I want to hear the truth so the truth can set me free. Oh, keep reading, Pastor. See, we got another branch to go to. But when he had sent them all out, he took the child's father and mother along with his companions and entered the child's room. There'll be times in your life we're talking about the need to guard the seed. There will be times in your life where it will be just you and Jesus. Just you and him. But you and him always make a majority if you're standing on his word. There will be times in your life that it might be just you and your spouse. There might be times in your life where it might be just you and a, and a couple good, actually faith-filled Word-believing believers around you. It's important who you surround yourself with, everybody. Yeah. It is. There also might be times in your life where it might be you and, and an awesome group of believers surrounding you and saying, come hell or high water, we know God's word is true. No matter what anybody says, God's word is truth. Protect the seed. Guard the seed. Realize there is a need to guard the seed. This is a year of what again? Harvest. It is a year of harvest. And I'm here to tell you this year, there are some things that are still popping. Some things that are still happening. And, and just remember... Just remember what, what, I, what the Spirit shared with me earlier during corporate prayer. There are some people that are about to pop into something. They're about to, to, to receive something. Just a, a, a supernatural multiplication of resources. But do you know what that also means? There's a really good chance that the enemy is going to try to stop that. What is our job? All right, the need to guard the seed. Amen. Whatever you're trusting God for, keep standing, keep believing, no matter what happens today, tomorrow, the next day, you stand till you get what you're trusting God for. Amen. Father, I thank you so much for the truth that is in your word, the truth that sets every single person free. Jesus, I thank you that you are the way, you are the truth, you are the life. And no one but no one comes to the kingdom and comes to the Father except through you. You are not just a Savior. You are the Savior. You are the Deliverer. You are the Restorer, the Redeemer. You are our all in all. And so, Lord, I thank you today as, as faith has come, as people have had ears to hear, hearts to receive, that they're seeing, Lord, the truth. Lord, I thank you. If there's anybody in this place at the sound of my voice, or maybe they're watching live right now or in the future, if they've never made a decision for Jesus, He's waiting. You're waiting, Lord. 
with arms wide open. Or maybe you served him at one time and, and you left and you, you walked away because of life, because of things that have happened. But today is your day. Jesus, thank you for your spirit. Holy Spirit, thank you for moving on the hearts of your people. Moving on the hearts of people watching. Thank you that people make a decision for you this day. Everybody look at me. I'm not done yet. But if you're in this place and you've never made Jesus your Lord and your Savior, I know a lot of you have already made the decision. You've been here for a while, but if you never have, I'm asking you. Do you want to make that decision? And if not, that's on you. Or maybe you want to come back. That's on you. But the Bible says, Jesus said, if you acknowledge me before men, I'll acknowledge you before my Father in heaven. But he also said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father in heaven. It's up to you. Is there anybody in here you say, that's me? Anybody at all? You made a decision, didn't you? When did you make it? Thursday. She made a decision to follow Jesus on Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. So... That's pretty awesome, but that was a really sad clap. Come on! Because the Bible says all of heaven rejoices over one. And if heaven's celebrating, we got to celebrate. And I know in church, the complimentary clap's the right thing to do. Come on! Made a decision with Jesus a few days ago. Are you glad you did it? I see a smile on her face right now. Made a decision for Jesus about, yeah, what, a about month it. ago? Yeah. Right? And by faith, he's cancer-free. And by faith, he's cancer-free in Jesus' name. Yeah. He's got some testimonies. And we know there's other people that have made a decision for Jesus also just recently. Is there anybody in here you said, I want to make that decision? Anybody at all? If not, maybe, maybe everybody's already made that decision. That's fine. But maybe it's somebody watching live right now. You don't know who's watching us. We have people all over the world watch us. And what you need to do is you need to do a simple thing. The Bible says that if you confess Jesus as Lord, not just Savior, but Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Today's a great day to make that decision. And I want to let you know, just like Jesus here, he's willing to prove himself to you. And so I just want to let you all know, I love you so much. I, I, I'd like to stay here another couple hours, but I've got to go up north with your other brothers and sisters in Christ. But I love you. And I want to say, you guys made my day by being here. Because I know you could be mowing your lawn. Your lawn. You could be doing something else. But you're here. And those of you who are watching, you're here too. And so I want to let you all know I love you. I appreciate you. And God is good. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Merlin, where's he at? Oh, he's over there. And thank you, Pastor Scott. Hallelujah. Did you, did you guys receive that word today about guarding your seed? Amen. I said amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. I know I go, uh, I, I listen to the word when it's being ministered here, and then I go up north and I listen to it again. I sit through this, the, the same message, and, and it's different somewhat from, from place to place. But I and you guys too, but I do that two times, and then I do it again on Wednesday. I do it again on Thursday, unless I'm in children's ministry. And the thing is, I still have to take notes. It's really important. Uh, you can you can really get stirred up about something, and it become very real to you, 
and you can think, man, that is so good. And at the time, you think you will never forget that. But you can leave the service, and you can focus on something else and never think about it again. That's a true story. That, that happens. And so uh, I just want to encourage, like Pastor told you today, man, take notes. Because you can reflect when you have notes. Amen. Everybody said amen. <laughs> amen. All right. Well, it is giving time. Is anybody ready to give today? Anybody excited and ready? The Bible says to be ready to distribute. Amen. Uh, it's talking about finances. Uh, Timothy talked about uh, being ready and willing to distribute uh, at, at when the opportunity comes. Amen. So we always need to be ready. I want to share a scripture here. And if anybody needs an offering envelope, go ahead and raise your hands. The ushers will be by to, to bring you a, an offering envelope. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, uh, it says, He who watches the wind, waiting for all conditions to be perfect, will not sow, will not sow seed, and he who looks at the clouds will not reap a harvest. How many of you believe that? How many of you think that's true? You can get to looking at the situation. You can get to looking at circumstances, and you make the decision based on that. You know, I'm not going to sow today. I'm not going to sow. Why? Because it's not right for me to sow at this time. Why? Well, I got this bill coming up. I got that bill coming up. Or my paycheck wasn't as big as normal or whatever it is. Or I just don't feel like it. <laughs> Have you ever not felt like giving? <laughs> but it says, He who watches the wind waiting for all conditions to be perfect will not sow seed. And he who looks at the clouds will not reap a harvest. How many of you know that the harvest can be there, but you don't go get it because you're making excuses? You're looking at things in the natural. Amen? And so uh, I just want to encourage you. We, are, we need to give based on the Word of God because we do not know what we think we might know. We don't see what's coming. We don't see the raises coming. We don't see faith. How many of you know you can't see when favor is coming? You can't predict it. You don't know when it's coming to your door. And the problem with people is they think they know, right? But when you sow a seed then you are activating that favor to show up, show up strong, amen, and you're doing it by faith. You're not doing it based on how it looks, amen? Amen. That's a good word. Hallelujah. All right. Praise God. Did everybody get an envelope that wanted to? All right. If you're watching online, you can give online. Go to forgivenonline.org. Click on the Given tab. Also remind you of the change for change. We are sowing this into missions, so we are taking change or uh, paper money as well. We don't take checks, but uh, you can put that in there uh, at the end of service. And so we're going to watch a video real quick, and then uh, uh, as you're doing that, when you have your offering ready, go ahead and hold it up. The ushers will be by to get it. Go ahead and start the video. Well, you know, when it comes to what God, God has given us boundaries, God has given us um, just some ways to live life, and it's all through God's words. You know, we talk about the Beatitudes a lot, but there's something in the Old Testament uh, that we don't really talk about as much, but it's the Old Testament, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah, the Old uh, Testament is in the Old Testament, yeah. <laughs> No, wait, that's what you just no, said. I did. There's did something I? in the Old Testament we don't talk about, and it's <laughs> called the Old Testament. I did. Thank you for listening just so I, well. I, I, am, I am a strong listener. <laughs> I bet the Ten I just wanted to encourage you. <laughs> Thank you. I bet the Ten Commandments are in the Old Testament. Yeah, so but we all know them. You know, you know the Ten Commandments? You can... I'm like a pro. I can spout them off. I can give them to you in order. All right. Okay. Well, what's, what's the first one? Number one. Okay. All right. Okay. They're in chronological order. It's not like a top ten list, all right? But do you know what the first one says? Yeah, start me. Okay, okay. All right, well, I just thought we'd go through these because these are great boundaries yeah, for us to live, to live by. Let's do it. I'll all right? tell you what I think about it. Okay, all right. And the first ones are how we have a relationship with God, okay? I so, know. All right, so um, 
you shall have no other gods before me. You shouldn't have any other gods before me, you know? Okay, right. In the world we live in today. Okay, but yeah, there's no other gods, Well, right? in the so, world we live in, we're told to coexist and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, but so. there's no other real gods, you know? I mean, there's only one real, real god. I mean, it's not like if there was another real god, uh -huh. you know, then maybe that'd be a challenge, you know? I mean, if there was, like, okay, if there was like a god of the Coolio, you know, or something like that. God of the Coolio. It's a term the kids use today, Coolio, uh -huh. you know? Like, it's all Coolio, you know? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think no one uses they that. They do. No, I don't Get think. Get an urban dictionary, all right? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Wikipedia, it, all right? <laughs> so, like, if there was, just go with me on uh -huh. this, if there was, like, a God of the Coolio, uh -huh. you know, and they had these big old cool God of the Coolio churches, and they were, like, really amazing, right? Yeah. I mean, like, huge churches that were so big, they so had, you like... Think people would just flock to them oh, and worship yeah. the church yeah. and the God of the Coolio instead oh, of the real yeah. God. I mean, if these churches would be huge, uh -huh. like, so big they would have, like, lazy rivers flowing through them, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And people could go to church on the lazy river, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. And, like... Yeah, see, that guy would go, right? So, like, they would be, like, floating. Like, even at a funeral, you could just, like, float by, you know? And just be like, I'm so sorry for your loss, you know? <laughs> Seriously. No. No, and they would be, like, heated, like, really heated, not like that guy swam by, <laughs> all right? That's the wrong kind of heat you want in the pool, all right? So I'm just saying, if you had that, you know, and then they probably had these awesome youth groups, you know, and, the, and they'd have a youth pastor that would play connects with them, you know, Xbox connects, and that's how he would connect with them, you know, and then he'd like jam out, and then like he'd slow it down and do like a Justin Bieber tune with them or something, you know, and that guy would go to that church, <laughs> I'm telling you. Okay, okay, I don't, I don't think that's really legitimate, but I'll just, I'll just move on. All right, then. <laughs> Amen. Why well, did everybody get a chance to give that wanted to? Didn't miss anybody? All right, gentlemen, come on up here. Wow, Christy, the, the announcements are written right here. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> All right. So, amen. All right, let's pray and release our faith. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this awesome opportunity to give and to sow into good ground. We sow based on our word, on your word, not on our emotions or how we feel or how it looks. We give in faith, and we thank you, Father, that as we do that and as we sow into good ground, as we bring our tithes, we bring our offerings, we just want to thank you, Father, that you are faithful. You are, and I pray for every person who is sowing today who may be struggling financially or going through a hard time, we want to thank you, Father, for favor in their lives. We want to thank you, Father, for increase coming to them speedily, by your grace, supernaturally. And we just give you all the praise and the glory for it. We thank you, Father, for what you are doing, the year of harvest. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. Amen. All right, gentlemen, you can go ahead and take that on back have a couple of announcements uh, real quick. Uh, you may have seen on Facebook that uh, uh, Cassie, Cassie Mosier, she usually sits right here with her husband, Kevin. Uh, her grandma passed on on, on Friday, uh, so it, there was a thing on Facebook about it. So just keep them in your thoughts. There is not going to be a viewing, uh, so um, just uh, keep them in your thoughts. Pray for them and, uh, during this time. And so I just wanted to share that if you did not see that on Facebook. Uh, also, if you saw on our Facebook group, we have uh, blessed four teachers so far with uh, school classroom supplies that they would normally have to play, pay out of pocket. Got a teacher right here that's pretty excited. Maybe you were one of them. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, but we bought $500 worth of supplies, and we're not quite done yet. We still have someone getting us a list of their needs. So if you would like to sow into that or you would like to say, hey, I'm, I want to take care of that. Uh, I want to pay for that. Uh, I would see Christy uh, Van Camp. She's in the sound booth and she will tell you basically how much we're still needing on that. If you would like to just sow into it, uh, just write on it uh, school supplies and we will make sure that gets appropriated to the right area. Amen. Also, we have today, actually, tonight, 6 p.m. What? Okay, he's shaking his head. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Awesome. Okay, so uh, due to uh, Cassie uh, Moser's grandma passing on, uh, they are, you are moving it back one week, okay? So I don't know if you, these people over here got a hold of you. They were sitting right here earlier. Okay, so they're planning on coming. Uh, so, uh, okay, they, they, the, the, the young, young man and the young lady said that they want to come. So I'll see if I can get them up north and let them know. But so it's actually this next Sunday. Not this Sunday, but this next coming Sunday, 6 p.m., Tyler and Heathers, bring a snack. It'll be an awesome, awesome time. Amen. Also, giving. Uh, giving fund um, is, is uh, areas that you can sow into. Amen. How many of you know we always need to sow? And our parking lot is a really oppor- good opportunity to sow into. If you are trusting God for maintenance in your own house, your own area, you, if you are needing things updated, I'm telling you, Sowing into our parking lot is a great way to get some seed in the ground and believe God for a harvest. And so we are, are what we're still needing to come in is $4,850. It will get updated tomorrow, and we'll see where we're at. But the last count that we had was $4,850. And we're also trusting God for new light poles out there. And so uh, if you would like to sow towards that as well, you can. Amen. So just wanted to, and we're also we have our Go Fund that we sow into on a regular basis uh, that uh, sends pastors out to minister the gospel. And so uh, that, that's a fund that they can have available uh, so that when the gospel needs to go out and they get an invitation or something and go out and minister, that they can do that. Amen. Also, I want to encourage you to be in here for prayer at 830 every Sunday morning. We pray from 830 to 850. It's a, it's a really good time to prep yourself and help prep the service in prayer. Amen. So I just want to encourage you to be in here. Uh, Heather led prayer this morning. She did an awesome job. And so uh, just come in here. Man, if you're here, uh, come in here and pray and just help. Amen. Uh, help in the spirit. Amen. All right. That's all I have. Don't forget to be here Thursday night uh, for our discussion. Discu- discussions have been really, really awesome on the authority of the believer. God bless you all, and we will see you again Thursday, 7 p.m.